I work as both a researcher and as a forensic psychiatrist, and I've been working in this field for dating back about 20 years, and one thing that's always struck me is how we use the law as an intervention on our patients in a similar way to we use um, medication and therapy. But there's not really very much evidence base behind what we're doing. Uh, how does it impact on our patients? How does it impact on outcomes? You can't really do randomized control studies looking at whether to use the law or not. And I was once told that it was pretty much impossible uh, to do research in this area. So hopefully I'm proving that wrong. Um, and I've been doing some research looking at the Mental Capacity Act and also more recently looking at fitness to plead. Now, you may not be familiar with what fitness to plead is. It's a very niche area of forensic psychiatry, which is a very niche area of psychiatry. So I thought I'd start with some definitions. So um, fitness to plead is a medical legal term, and it considers whether someone who's been accused of a crime is able to defend themselves properly at trial. Um, it's up to a judge to decide if someone's unfit or not, but they rely on evidence uh, provided often by psychiatrists or psychologists in order to make their decision. So we have a big role uh, in this. If somebody is found unfit to plead, they don't have a trial, uh, something else will happen and more often than not they're diverted into mental health services or social services. So it has quite a big impact both on the individual, on the court itself, on victims and on the public as a whole. Now, in the context of fitness to plead, plead doesn't only mean uh, whether someone can say plead guilty or not. It encompasses most of the abilities needed to take part in a trial, um, such as understanding the evidence, giving evidence, instructing counsel, and following the proceedings. And the test for fitness to plead is called the Pritchard Criteria, which dates back to a, a legal case in 1836, the case of Pritchard, who was a deaf mute accused of bestiality. Uh, and the judge asked the jury to consider fitness to plead using the criteria that I listed before. And here we are nearly 200 years later using pretty much exactly the same criteria, which are widely felt to be really out of, um, out of line with modern psychiatric thinking and psychiatrists, uh, lawyers, judges, the courts. Uh, many people feel that uh, fitness to plead as it is currently in England and Wales is currently not fit for purpose. Now, to address this, the Law Commission of England and Wales have been carrying out a big consultation since uh, 2010, and in 2016, they published their final report recommending lots of changes to the law. I won't go into details, but they included changing the Pritchard test to a more mental capacity-based test, broadening the scope for fitness to plead to apply in both the higher courts and the lower courts, uh, and lowering the threshold for unfitness and screening for mental disorder at court, so actively going out and looking for people who might be struggling to defend themselves at trial. Now, these recommendations have been widely welcomed, but do we know if they're right? There's no evidence, really, to base what we have been doing and what, have been, what the proposed change is to see if this is actually serving the purpose that Fitness to Plead exists for. So I've, my plan has been to seize this ever-growing window of opportunity between the Law Commission publishing their draft legislation and government doing something about it. And the more government get distracted by other things, uh, the, less, the more time it's taking for these proposals to be put into law, if they ever will be. Um, so um, along with a team here and in other institutions, have been carrying out um, a number of research projects looking at fitness to plead. And this is why I've said fitness to plead is on trial. We're not only looking at the concept itself uh, and uh, testing the performance of the concept, but also testing the performance of a structured assessment instrument that we've developed for fitness to plead here. Um, it's very interdisciplinary, the nature of, of uh, studying mental health law. I work with clinicians, lawyers, sociologists, philosophers. I've done conceptual analysis. Um, a mixed method study. The main uh, study has been interviewing 500 defendants as they attend court to try and estimate the prevalence of mental disorder and, fitness to and unfitness to plead in court, which is unsurprisingly much higher than the Law Commission's impact assessment suggests, which suggests any changes to the law are going to have huge resource implications. Um, it's a very topical and hopefully translatable study. Here are just a few cases. Given how infrequently fitness to plead is actually considered, it's often in the press. 
Uh, it's involved lords, uh, MPs, serial killers, uh, honeymooners. There's been lots of talk of fitness to plead, and, and often I read these articles and, and see how poorly the law is, um, can, is understood, even at the highest levels of the legal system. Uh, this, I'm coming to an end now, but as the theme of today is all about impact, I just thought I'd give some examples of the impact where I find myself talking about research, not only uh, in academic journals and textbooks. Um, I've spent some time working in Parliament with the Law Commission um, and with a number of uh, disciplines, both uh, in this country and abroad. Uh, so this is a, a great area to research, and we're always trying to build a team. Thanks very much.